All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to show a very important analysis result, namely that limits of sequences are unique. In particular, what I would like to show is the following, namely, if Sn is a sequence that converges to S, so if limit n goes to infinity of Sn equals S, and the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn equals T, then those two things have to be equal. Then S equals T. And in some sense, it does make sense because you see, if your sequence, suppose this is not true, Sn goes to S, but also Sn goes to T, what this means is that your sequence kind of clusters around the point S, but it also goes very close to the point T. So how can it do both at the same time? How can Sn go both to this number and this number at the same time? doesn't make sense unless you have like multi-track drifting which is not part of this course and the reason i'm doing this not because it's an important result but the proof is actually quite nice and so let's do this let me just quickly erase this little picture so here's the proof suppose i get sn converges to s and sn converges to t. And in particular, what this means is for all epsilon something happens. So let epsilon be given. Now, on the one hand, we know Sn goes to S. So because Sn goes to S, we know that there is some number n, n1 such that if uh, n is bigger than n1, then Sn is very close to S. Sn minus S is less than epsilon. On the other hand, because Sn now converges to T, we know that there is, yeah, still the T, there is N2 such that if N is bigger than N2, then Sn minus t is also less than epsilon. And so in other words, what do we have? We have info about Sn versus S, and we have info about Sn versus t. But now let's compare S and t. Then consider the absolute value of S minus t. On the one hand, because it's an absolute value, it's greater or equal to zero. On the other hand, you want to use this very important trick in analysis of adding and subtracting Sn. So this is the same thing as S minus Sn plus Sn minus T. Why? Because we have Sn minus T here and we have Sn minus S here. And then we want to use a triangle inequality. So that's absolute value of S minus Sn plus absolute value of Sn minus T. And that's the same thing as Sn minus S. So this is really less than epsilon plus epsilon, which is two epsilon. So what do we have? We have that this number, this fixed number, S minus T, it's on the one hand, of course, non-negative, but also less than any arbitrary positive number. So in other words, what this is saying is this non-negative number is arbitrarily small. 
So let's say it's smaller than 0 0.1, it's smaller than 0 0.01. So the only way this can work is if this number is 0. So since epsilon is arbitrary, we get simply that this middle number is basically squeezed between 0 and 0. So it has to be 0. And the only way absolute value of this is 0 is if those two numbers are the same. So if s equals t. Strictly okay. speaking, if s minus t is 0, but that's the same thing as s equals t. Now, if you're not impressed by this last argument, I do have a slightly more elegant way. Or do it as follows. Do it by contradiction. So if s is not equal t, then the absolute value, you see that's strictly positive, because the only way it could be 0 if, if s equals t. And then, well, look, this is true for all epsilon. In particular, choose epsilon such that this is less than this number. Now choose. such that 2 epsilon is less than s minus t, or even less than or equal, it's fine. So for instance, epsilon is this number over 2 works, absolute value of s minus t over 2. And then, by the way, you see this is really analysis at its finest. We'll have this weird variable epsilon with, that we don't know what to do, Okay, and really at the end, you choose your epsilon such that it solves the problem. So again, this is super, super classical in analysis. Then, what do we have? On the one hand, s minus t, we don't even need this. On the one hand, s minus t, it's less than 2 epsilon by assumption, but it's also less than or equal to s minus t. So combining this, s minus t is strictly less than s minus t, but that's a contradiction. A contradiction with the fact that s is not equal t, so in fact, s equals t. And that's it. All right, thank you very much.